This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to our day one session of seven week learning Oracle Golden Gate Challenge. My name is Ashish, Ashish Agarwal and I'll be delivering this lecture to you. So before commencing the session, just a quick round of update regarding my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Ashish Agarwal underscore GG. So if you haven't visited the channel, I would request you to do visit the channel and do like, share and subscribe the channel. The channel is dedicated to Golden Gate related videos only. Thank you. So let us start a session today. So this is day one of Oracle Golden Gate classic architecture learning seven week challenge. So now why have I labeled it at seven week learning challenges with each session I'll be providing you task challenges to perform at the end of the session. So we'll be doing the session first and at the end I'll be providing you tasks to perform which you will be implementing which will take your learning forward. So the agenda includes introduction to Golden Gate, Oracle Golden Gate classic or Oracle Golden Gate architecture installation different types of architecture of golden gate and what are concepts and components of oracle golden gate dml replication initial load how to how to load the data initially between source and target then how to perform data filtration and transformation using oracle golden gate so golden gate has capability to filter the data and transform the data as well. I request you to keep yourself on mute. And we'll be discussing about bidirectional configuration, bidirectional auto CDR. So, auto CDR is the new feature of Oracle Golden Gate. Then, DDL replication how to monitor the lag in golden gate troubleshooting issues in oracle golden gate what is checkpoint in golden gate how golden gate ensures zero data loss how to configure golden gate security so security is one of the major aspect in golden gate so how to configure golden gate i have just joined udan how, how to configure golden gate security what are different parameters in oracle golden gate and parameter files Logdump utility of Oracle Golden Gate, how to read the trail files, what are what what is performance to how to do performance tuning of Oracle Golden Gate, then parallel replica is the new feature of Golden Gate, heartbeat table, automatic heartbeat table, how you can implement performance matrix server, which is again the new feature, Golden Gate Cloud Service, which is available on OCI, self-describing trail file of Golden Gate, 19C new features, obey commands, macros include files so all these things and much more will be covered in detail during the training so one thing guys here is the session is interactive during the session i request you all to keep yourself on mute you will be given all the chance to ask your question none of your question will remain unanswered during the session so during the session whenever i ask you to unmute yourself only then unmute yourself and ask your queries in the meanwhile if you think your question is urgent you have the chat window you can post your question in the chat window as well and i'll answer all your queries so none of your queries during the session will remain unanswered that's that's what i assure you okay okay so let us start with today's session so day one agenda includes in today's session we are going to discuss introduction to oracle golden gate overview of oracle golden gate different types of architectures available classic microservices so i mentioned this is seven week learning classic architecture so what does this mean we'll be discussing about that what is classic architecture what is microservices and then what is very data we'll have quick introduction to all that then what are different types of extracts and replicates so one of the question which i face from my students is like uh, with the introduction of uh, microservices does integrated no longer exist so that question will be answered when we discuss about different types of extracts and replicates then we'll be discussing about setting up the virtual box boxes which you must have received and what are the training guidelines then golden gate architecture how data flow golden gate certification metrics how you view the certification metrics how to download golden gate binaries how to perform installation 
deciding where to install Oracle Golden Gate. And if time permits, we'll also discuss about prerequisites to set up Oracle Golden Gate. So let us quickly discuss, uh, start with Oracle database architecture. So Oracle Golden Gate is a change data capture tool. Change data capture tool means it captures the changes, whatever changes are happening in your environment. It captures those changes for you. So the, the changes means whatever changes happens in your environment. Say, for example, you are doing any DDL changes or DML changes, whatever changes happening in your environment, those changes Golden Gate captures. So just to give you a brief introduction about Oracle Golden Gate. So Golden Gate was founded in 1995. And it is named after famous San Francisco Bridge, which is present in San Francisco, US. So Golden Gate was named after it. From 1995 to 2009, it was a standalone company. In 2009, Oracle overtook it. And since then, it is known as Oracle Golden Gate. Now, from 2009 up till now, there has been major upheaval in Oracle Golden Gate. So Oracle Golden Gate support has been increased to lot many different databases. So Oracle Golden Gate support, in, support includes homogeneous as well as heterogeneous databases. Now, so Oracle Golden Gate not only supports your Oracle database, it also supports your non-Oracle databases as well. So Golden Gate is a CDC tool. By CDC, we mean that change data capture. So what do we mean by change data capture? So whatever changes happens on your source database, those changes are captured by the, those changes are captured by the Golden Gate extract process and get applied on the target database so whatever changes are happening on source those changes this golden gate process will capture and will apply to the target database now where those changes are getting written where are those changes so each database has its own transaction logs where those changes get written so golden gate captures those changes from that location and applies to the target database so oracle database also has its own transaction log so let us discuss about oracle database architecture here so your oracle database is divided into two parts instance and oracle database instance constitutes background processes and memory components oracle database includes actual files which are present in oracle database architecture so memory components include library cache data dictionary cache database buffer cache java pool redo log buffer and large pool so guys one thing i want to clear here is related to oracle database architecture i'm going to discuss what is needed for golden gate oracle database architecture itself is a big topic in itself right so that will take means it can take up to three to four hours but i'm going to discuss what is needed for oracle golden gate and how what is needed how oracle golden gate captures the data so oracle golden gate is divided into two parts instance and oracle database so instance again is divided into two parts memory components and background processes so background processes include your pmon smon database writer log writer checkpointing and other processes your background your memory components include library cache data dictionary cache which is also called as shared pool then database buffer cache java pool redo log buffer and large pool then under oracle database you have the files called as data files which are the actual files where your actual data resides control files stores the metadata information redo log files are the files which contains the changes whatever changes are happening to the database 
so what happens is whatever changes you make so say for example you are you are updating the record the record already exists in the database you are updating the record so what happens is using database write up so whenever any changes any block you change that block gets return over database buffer cache now once you update the record so say for example first of all let us talk about selecting any data so when you select any data so what happens is the data gets so say for example you have a table department existing into the database you execute select star from deep department so what happens is from data file you will get that data on your screen so the data file contains the actual data now say for example you want to update any record so whenever you update any record in the database that record gets return in database buffer cache first now any dirty buffer gets returned from database buffer cache to data file using the database writer process along with that copy of that gets returned to the redo log buffer as well so whatever change you are making that change gets returned into database buffer cache and along with that a copy gets returned into redo log buffer now database writer process writes the dirty buffer from database buffer cache to data file so that dirty buffer is nothing but the change whatever change you have mentioned now what happens is before database writer process writes that from database buffer cache to data file redo log buffer writes the data data from redo log buffer gets returned to redo log file using the log writer process so log writer process writes the data from redo log buffer to redo log file so the log writer process writes the data from redo log buffer to redo log file whenever commit happens so as soon as commit is there it will write or when redo log buffer is one third full or when there is one mb of redo or every 3 seconds or before database writer process writes so before database writer process writes the data to data file redo log this log writer process writes that to the redo log files so redo log files are the files which contains the actual changes so any ddl dml changes which happens to the database those changes gets returned into redo log file another important thing which you have to note over here is your redo log file contains committed as well as uncommitted data it's a common misconception which i have seen in many people that redo log file contain only committed data that's not correct redo log file contains committed as well as uncommitted data so whether you commit or not the change will get returned to redo log file now these redo log files are limited in size you define so the backup of redo log file is taken on disk and the the backup of redo log files are called as archive log files so there is backup of redo log files when it's done it's taken on disk and though the backup of redo log files are called as archive log files so whenever any change happens it gets returned to redo log file and once redos get full you must have seen in your environment your archives are generating so how those archives gets generated from redo log file so archive log files are nothing but backup of redo log files so in oracle database as i mentioned oracle uh, golden gate reads the data from the transaction logs so when golden gate reads the data from oracle database that it reads from redo log files or backup of redo log files which are called as archive log files so it receives the it reads the changes from your it reads the changes from your redo log files or backup of redo log files which are called as archive log files in case of any other database like sql server mysql these are called as transaction logs of the database okay so now the question comes why do we need redo log files why in first hand why did, why these redo log files really exist at the database level so for disaster say for example before your data could be written 
from database before say for example you updated the record and committed it but as as we mentioned they don't reflect into data data files of the database until database writer process writes from database buffer cache to data file now say for example before database writer process writes the data from, from database buffer cache to data file your your database crashes so in case of your so once the database comes up what your database do is because you you do the recovery so, so recovery happens from your redo log files so whatever changes happens to the database all changes gets re recorded into redo log and the transaction into redo log is used for recovery of the transaction it is used for recovering purpose for in the same database similarly for any change data capture tool when we talk about any golden gate competitor or any other change data capture tool so it is these redo log files are used by redo log files or backup of redo log files which are called as archive log files are used by those change data capture tools. so the source for oracle golden gate or any change data capture tool is your redo log file and archive log file basically the transaction logs of database so when we say golden gate captures the data from sql server from where does it capture from the transaction log again when we say it captures the data from mysql database from where does it capture those changes from from the transaction log so each database has its own transaction logs in case of oracle these transaction logs are called as redo logs or archive logs okay so what are the list of solutions available today for data replication apart from golden gate so golden gate is a data replication tool which replicates the data so you have emc recover point ibm mirror hitachi true copy hp's continuous access is there along with that you must have heard about attinity as well which is also being used in some places so all these are competitors of oracle golden gate along with that you can also mention data guard as well now guys one thing i'll tell you during this session i'll discuss as and when session goes on but data guard is not competitor of oracle golden gate because the purpose of data guard and golden gate is completely different again as i mentioned data guard is so why those are different as i mentioned that those are different even though both are replication solutions the reason being data guard is a complete database replication solution so data guard is a database level solution replication tool golden gate is an object level replication tool so as and when session goes on we'll be discussing more about this part will be clear to you more so now the question comes we have so many competitors of golden gate and many of you may not have heard about any of these and in fact attinity which i mentioned right some of you may have heard but many of you may not have heard in fact a single of them you you only know about golden gate why why golden gate is most popular tool so the reason is with golden gate data is sent in real time with sub second latency so golden gate replicates the data in near real time with almost zero lag so say for example you commit the transaction on source database at 11 am it gets applied onto the target database within few seconds golden gate supports not only oracle database it supports your non oracle databases as well so it supports heterogeneous environment across different databases and hardware types so your source database can be on oracle target can be mysql golden gate can replicate the data without any issue similarly another thing is with golden gate the advantage is your source can be on linux platform target can be on sun solar sun solaris golden gate can replicate the data means with golden gate it is not mandatory for you to use to have same source and target platforms your platform can be different between source and target using oracle golden gate golden gate delivers high performance with low impact so high performance with low impact means see golden gate is an external tool to the database so 
we cannot say it will have zero impact on the database see golden gate is an external tool which sits on the database right now when database runs if you put anything on top of it we expect to have some impact of that tool but with golden gate the impact is very minimal i i will again say impact is not zero it is really very minimal you may not in fact able to notice about the impact as well now with golden gate it has ability to move large volume of data very efficiently so it can replicate your blob blob large objects very easily and very efficiently and there is no single point of failure so it is really very easy to troubleshoot there are multiple points involved in oracle golden gate and it is really very easy to troubleshoot oracle golden gate so it is best in class leader in real time data solution so another important thing is golden gate complements existing oracle products as well like you, it ensures continuous availability for heterogeneous systems so say for example you have got primary database running in dallas and you are replicating the data using golden gate you have built a secondary site so it is available in new york now in the dallas center there is power failure or some disaster so what happens is you, your application can quickly switch over to new york because everything is getting replicated over there ensuring your databases are highly available then real time data access for reporting so you can switch your reporting jobs onto the replicated database server so many organizations like telecom and uh, financial institutions they have oltp transactions running during the day now when you run the reporting jobs they have very huge reporting jobs now when you run reporting jobs it hamper your ongoing oltp jobs as well so what happens is it your database performance or database response become very slow so you can push your you can switch your reporting jobs onto the secondary server ensuring that your your reporting jobs can run from the secondary server because your data is getting replicated with very minimal time then zero downtime upgradeation and migration golden gate support so you can upgrade your existing database or migrate your database so golden gate is right now getting very popular in these cloud migrations so organizations buy licenses just for migrating their database from on prem to cloud because a lot of organizations are moving to cloud so golden gate can do it with the zero downtime as well and also golden gate works with odi and informatica golden gate along with odi and informatica is one of the best business intelligence solution available in the market so a lot of organizations use golden gate with odi or informatica to make it a tool for business intelligence purpose as well so golden gate is being used in every domain right now top banks top telecom operators food and drug store financial data services healthcare everywhere golden gate is being used in all over the world right now so golden gate solutions as i mentioned high availability zero downtime upgradation and migration live reporting business intelligence guys i can give this example of live reporting to you so state bank of india for for those who are not from india just to let them know state bank of india is the biggest bank of india with customer with huge customer base now i was work i, I worked for them in in the year 2012 13 so at that time their database size was 43 terabytes now it must have grown it it must have crossed 100 tb for sure but at that moment it was 100 terabytes and they were on 10g or 10g i guess yeah they were using 10g oh, they, oracle database 10g at that moment now what used to happen was those of you who are from india you can relate to it at that moment in 2011 12 sbi was losing lot of its customers the reason was their response was very low and the response was coming basically from the database it was really very slow at that moment so what happened during that time was 
they used to run their OLTP transactions and reporting jobs from the same server. Now, they they were they had the disaster recovery side built, but they were replicating using Data Guard at that moment. So their primary server was in Mumbai, and secondary server was in Hyderabad, India. Now, what used to happen was they used to run almost daily. They used to run some nightly jobs, and in some days, almost two three days a week. they used to have more than 100 gb of archives getting generated within a span of 2 hours so 100 gb of archives used to get generated now data guard they were using data guard to replicate the data to the hyderabad server but i have seen personally like when 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 i was doing solution designing for them i saw that their data guard was lagging behind almost Three to four days, many times, and you can understand if their primary site goes down. Many a times, it it used to happen because their server were not capable enough as well. So many a times, what used to happen was their primary server used to go down, and hence once the primary database is not reachable, as a result, all the services used to be down, and hence SBI was SBI name was uh, means people were talking negative about SBI and. it was losing customers at that moment so i was called for solution designing i was uh, i i did some solution designing for them and at that moment i suggested them to use oracle golden gate to replicate the data on the secondary server so what they did they provided me the secondary server they they, they were still using data guard as well so i set up the replication for them which was replicating the data from primary to secondary server now what so i set up golden gate between their mumbai and hyderabad server again on a secondary on the second database not on the I means because it was initial stage and see a big bank or big organization won't straight away change the existing solution right so i set up the golden gate for them between mumbai and hyderabad and you won't believe the replication time between source and target was 5 to 10 seconds and along with that when during the night time 100 gb of archives used to generate the maximum lag was noticed was maximum 1 hour lag was noticed and by the time their oltp transaction started in morning the lag was completely gone so reporting jobs what they did was they switched their reporting jobs which used to run during day time on the hyderabad server which was getting replicated using oracle golden gate so they switched their reporting jobs and hence as a result the response time of the primary database increased so golden gate was really a savior for them and it and they once did a study prior to implementing golden gate they were experiencing the lag of million dollar per day around 5 not million dollar million rupees so 5 crore rupees loss of 500 5 yeah 5 crore rupees loss daily they were facing due to this with the introduction of oracle golden gate all this loss was minimized again they reported uh, the loss of around 1 lakh rupees still at that moment but it was due to some other reason it was not due to this lag or some other thing but yeah with introduction of golden gate they switched their reporting to the secondary server and once it was done the customer satisfaction increased and it went well for them so oracle golden gate is supported for multiple databases and platform there is a few means just a, it's not a complete list so oracle golden gate supports your oracle database db2 sql server sybase ingress teradata inscribe sql server mysql it supports it supports multiple platforms like windows linux so from 12.3 onwards golden gate introduced the supports for no no sql informix databases as well also postgres capture and replication is also supported from golden gate version 12. Dot, no, to, from Golden Gate version 12.3 onwards, apply to Postgres is supported. 
from 19c onwards capture from postgres is also supported so multiple databases are supported now also it supports multiple platforms like windows linux sun solaris hp with different variants ibm all platforms the support is get, getting increased with each version so with 19c the support has increased a lot okay okay so this was the introduction to oracle golden gate if you have any question you can ask uh, ashish a uh, couple of questions here yeah uh, first question uh, does the source database need to be mandatorily in the archive log mode for golden gate so i haven't discussed about that yet shri raman so this question will be answered to you once we discuss about prerequisite but the answer to your question okay. is yes it needs to be but we'll be discussing more on that later okay uh, second question you said that cross platform is supported i mean meaning that my target can be on solaris or hp for example and my target can be on uh, linux but solaris Absolutely. and linux the indian format is different so is the yeah. indian format conversion handled automatically or do we have yeah. to configure it explicitly? no it is handled automatically so we'll be discussing right. about all that all those questions will be answered for you once we do the okay. setup uh, and last question what about uh, non oracle databases like mongo cassandra etc are those also supported uh cassandra i am not sure mongodb i think it is supported so we'll be discussing about certification metrics when you check the certification metrics you will get the answer to that so we'll see right. uh, you uh, i mean the certification matrix is available on support right yes yeah, certification matrix is available on oracle website yeah i'll show it to you from where you can download okay all right thank you okay there is one question do we have any exception to any data types which cannot be replicated by gg so the answer to that question is prior to introduction of classic there was lot of uh, exceptions but with the introduction of integrated capture most of the data types are supported so what is supported i think most of them are supported in fact prior to 12.2 there was some issue related to uh, your blob club etc but with introduction now everything is good so most of them are supported okay any other question from anyone okay so next is uh, all going... of the database is supported right sorry in any restrictions on the database additions that are supported we'll be discussing again so golden gate uh, is supported from golden gate version 10 database version 10 g onward no i'm not talking about version i'm talking about edition because edition all the database is standard edition enterprise edition standard edition 2 and all that so are all again, those editions again that question will be answered to you when you check so when when you check the certification metric so we'll be discussing about that so golden gate supports your uh, enterprise edition completely with standard edition there are a lot of research all right thank you uh, so, uh, ashish um, like uh, you just answered my question right about the database data types right so just have one more thing like do we have any any kind of a um, uh, list available on on metalink or, or uh, something the oracle oracle uh, uh, coding it documentation saying that uh, let's say during migration we need to ensure you know that uh, the databases of XYZ type should not be there in the source, otherwise it will not get replicated. So do we have as such yeah. any exception list provided by, by Oracle? Yeah, so we do have provided what is supported. Okay, one thing I'll tell you here. Mm -hmm. You will never get the list what is not supported. But yeah, you will get the list what is supported. So it is available. We'll discuss about that later. We'll be discussing. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, how about the licensing? I mean, do we need to have a separate licensing for this uh, Golden Gate or the uh, Data Guard and uh, Golden Gate works? I mean, either way.
আছে কিনে আমি Uh, Ashish, sorry, are you saying something because we are not able to hear you? Same issue with me. I can hear you Ashish guys. I think Ashish is busy, I think. Yeah, I think he's muted himself or something. Because he's just put up another slide. I think let's put it in the chat and then we will see. Uh, Ashish, we, we cannot hear you. Uh... This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So now let us talk about architecture, different types of architectures available with Oracle Golden Gate. So as I mentioned at the starting of the session, this session is seven week learning classic architecture training so what does this classic architecture means so there are two types of architecture available in golden gate one is classic second is microservices architecture many of you may may already know about it but still i'll cover this part so as i mentioned in 2009 oracle overtook golden gate and since then it is known as oracle golden gate now from 2009 to 2017 there was only one way to configure golden gate and that was through command prompt ggsca so until 2017 it was called as oracle golden gate in 2017 oracle renamed it to oracle golden gate classic architecture and they launched a new type of architecture of Oracle Golden Gate, which is called as Oracle Golden Gate Microservices Architecture. So microservices architecture is available from Golden Gate version 12.3 onwards. It allows you to set up, manage, troubleshoot, configure Golden Gate through GUI. It allows for better integration with cloud application and it is available as of today for Oracle databases. I heard last week, they launched it for SQL Server around a week or 10 days before, but I haven't tried it. So I will tell, still I will say it is available for only Oracle databases as well. Classic architecture is G command prompt based architecture, which is available for Oracle as well as non Oracle databases as well. So from Golden Gate version 12.3 onwards, you have two types of architecture available. One is classic, second is microservices. So you can choose any of the two which is supported in your environment. You can choose any of the two to implement that in your Oracle Golden Gate environment. So classic architecture is available for Oracle as well as non-Oracle database. However, microservices is available for Oracle databases only. So when you are setting up Golden Gate for Oracle database, you have the option to choose between classic and microservices. But say if you, are, if you want to implement Golden Gate for SQL Server, you don't have choice. You only can go with classic architecture. Okay. Then there is another product of Golden Gate family which is called as Oracle Golden Gate Very Data. So Very Data, as the name suggests, it verifies the data for you. So Very Data is used to identify the data discrepancies between the objects between source and target, and it can repair those as well for you. So say for example, you have a table department on source and target, and you're replicating using Oracle Golden Gate. Now, say for example, on source you have 50,000 records, on target you have 40,000 records. So, there is that discrepancy of 10,000 records. So, what Veridata can do for you is it can identify the data discrepancies for you and it can repair those discrepancies as well. Another important thing here to note is with Veridata, the major advantage is you don't need any downtime as well to, to run this data to, to run the very data job so you don't need any downtime for validating the data so oracle golden gate very data is a tool 
which is used to validate the data for you and it can do the data discrepancy check so now very data is getting nowadays a lot used in your cloud migration so what organizations do is they buy the licenses of very data just for uh, data validation check when they migrate their databases from on-prem to cloud and very data can identify what all objects are in sync and if they are not in sync it can repair those discrepancies as well so these are the three things in oracle golden gate which which are present classic architecture microservices and very data so as i may already mentioned you first learn this classic architecture and then you can choose or move to other two okay now one question which i used to face a lot was and still i do face is and which i try to answer as much as possible the question which is being asked is with the introduction of microservices does it mean integrated no longer exist does anyone have same question okay so i see yes so let us now talk about different types of extracts and replicates and hope the question will be answered for you now there are two types of extracts available one is integrated and second is classic so classic architecture is available since beginning of golden gate integrated extract is available from golden gate version 11 to 04 and database version 11 to 03 classic architecture is available since beginning and it's still it is supported however if you are using multi tenant architecture database then you cannot configure your classic architecture classic extract so classic extract classic extract is only available for your non multi if 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 you are using it for oracle database classic extract is available for non multi tenant architecture database non pdb cdp so integrated so classic extract is available for all oracle databases integrated extract is available only for oracle database now I different just, types I, of dif different shiraman let me complete and if you have any question post a question in the chat window now different types of replicates which are available in oracle golden gate are non-integrated or classic replicate which is available since the beginning and still it is available then you have integrated replicate which was introduced from golden gate version 12.1 and database version 12c so if your database version is 11 to 04 or less than 12c you cannot use integrated extract you will have to use non-integrated replicate only then coordinated replicate was introduced in 12.2 version onwards Coordinated replicate was introduced basically to parallelize or make the multi, run the multiple threads of your classic replicate. Now from 12.3 onwards, you have got parallel replicate introduced. So parallel replicate is the latest version of replicate, which is almost five times faster than its contemporary replicate. So there are two types of parallel replicate available parallel non-integrated replicate and parallel integrated replicate so parallel for using parallel non-integrated replicate the minimum database version should be 12.1 and golden gate version should be 12.3 so parallel replicate has been introduced from golden gate version 12.3 for using parallel integrated replicate the minimum database version should be 12.2 and golden gate version should be 12.3 so what you see over here non-integrated replicate and integrated replicate you can consider them as non-parallel replicates however the then from 12.3 onwards the parallel version of these two have been launched under parallel replicate so integrated replicate was introduced in golden gate version 12.1 coordinated was introduced in 12.2 parallel replicate was introduced in 12.3 now the question which I face from a lot of people is how to decide which type of extract should we use? How to decide which type of replicate should we be using? So the answer to that question I replied like I, my reply would be use the latest supported feature. So if your database supports parallel replicate and your golden gate supports parallel replicate go with parallel replicate. 
Similarly, if your database and Golden Gate supports integrated replicate, go with the latest feature, which is integrated one. So go with that. See, one thing is the, the product is owned by Oracle. We have to understand. And when Oracle releases anything, they do it by thorough testing and they do it upon proper checks as well. Though, yeah, I agree. Some of the features remain untested and it depends on environment for which you might need to raise the bug. But yes, as I mentioned, the product is owned by Oracle and we can try and this parallel replicate etc. Now it's quite old. I think they were launched in 2017 or 18. So all, most of the bug fixes are there. In fact, the latest version in 19C. So yeah, all is well. So if you have to, so these are the different types of extracts and replicates available. Now, again, the same thing. So why people get confused is the question which was there was with the introduction of microservices does integrated no longer exist so the term classic here refers to the traditional one so when when integrated wasn't there the classic extract was called as extract only there was no classic extract at that moment it was called as extract now when integrated was launched they renamed it to classic extract so what I understand is the term classic here means traditional. Same with a type of architecture. When microservices wasn't there, it was called as Oracle Golden Gate architecture. Now with the introduction of classic, with the introduction of microservices, they have renamed the traditional architecture to classic. So the confusion which comes, why this confusion comes is because this term of classic is there under architecture as well as different types of extra. Okay, so understand one thing under classic architecture, you have different type of extracts which include integrated and classic different types of replicates, non integrated replicate integrated replicate coordinated and parallel replicate. Similarly, under microservices, you have different types of extracts available integrated extract classic extract non integrated replicate integrated replicate coordinated replicate as well as parallel replicate. So you can choose or configure any type of configuration in your environment provided that is supported of course whenever you are choosing any type of architecture so there are two types of architecture classic architecture and microservices architecture under classic architecture there are different types of extracts and replicates similarly under microservices you have the same types of extracts and replicates available okay yeah Sri Raman, you had a question. Can you please tell me exactly what, because I am totally new to this uh, golden gate. I do not understand what is an extract and what is a replicate. Can you please explain the concept and what is it? Again, again, that part will be covered for you, Sri Raman. Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, how do I understand what these concepts that you have just talked about if I don't even know what an extract or a replicate is? Sri Raman, don't worry about that. Don't worry. That will be clear to you. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, so now, yeah. Let us. Um, let us. Move Ashish, to, can, you, can you hear me? So, AJ, just let me cover this architecture and then. Okay. We'll, sure, sure, we'll sure, 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 sure. No worries. No. So worries. Now, now, let us talk about the architecture. How data flow in Oracle Golden Gate. So. Each database has its own transaction log. So Golden Gate replicates the data from source to target. So your source database can be Oracle or any non Oracle supported database. Similarly, target database can be any Oracle or any non Oracle supported database. So each database has its own transaction logs. In case of Oracle, we call these transaction logs as redo logs or backup of redo logs, which are called as archive logs. In case of any non Oracle database, we call it as transaction logs where the changes are stored. Now, whenever any change is made to the database, say for example, you are inserting the data, updating the data or deleting the data or doing any DDL change, that change gets recorded into the transaction logs. Now you configure Golden Gate capture process, which reads the data out of your transaction logs and captures only committed transactions. So as I mentioned earlier, your transaction logs contains committed or uncommitted data. So Golden Gate capture process 
reads the data from your transaction logs and captures only committed transactions. Once it captures those committed transactions, it writes them to the trail file on local machine. So capture process captures the data and the, it, it writes them to the local machine files, which are called as trail files. Once the data becomes available into trail files, so trail files residing on source machine are called as local trail. So capture process captures the data by upon reading the transaction logs of the database and captures only committed transactions and writes them to the local trail files. Once the trail, once the data is available into local trail file, data pump process reads the data from the local trail sends it over TCP IP network and writes it to the remote trail file. So the trail file are operating system files. They reside on the operating system. So they are just like your archive log files. So just like your archive log files reside on the system, on your operating system. Similarly, these trail files consume your operating system memory. So Capture process captures the data, writes to trail file on local machine, which are called as local trail file. Once the data becomes available into local trail, data pump process reads the data out of your local trail, sends it over TCP IP network and writes it to trail file on target machine. So the trail file residing on target machine are called as remote trail file. Once the data becomes available into remote trail, Golden Gate delivery process reads the data out of your remote trail and apply it to target database. So here the capture process is also called as extract process. Delivery process is also called as replicate process. So in the previous slide, we discussed about different types of extracts and different types of replicates. So the capture process is also called as extract. So during the training, as in, as in when the training goes on, when we talk about extract, it means capture. And delivery process is the replicate process, which does the delivery to the database. Extract process is the capture mechanism, which capture the data from the source database and delivery process apply the data to the target database. So there are three processes involved here. Capture, pump, and delivery. This is a data pump process. Another important thing to note is, guys, at the database level, we also have data pump. So here the terminology when we talk about Golden Gate is this is Golden Gate data pump, which 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 transfers the data from source to target. So in Golden Gate, when we talk, there will be two terms which you will be seeing, which which matches database. One is data pump and another one is check. So when we talk about these terms during our session, until and unless specified, we are always talking about Golden Gate data pump and Golden Gate checkpoint here. Okay, so I'll again repeat this architecture, how the data flow happened. So each database has its own transaction logs. Whatever DML and DDL changes you make to the database, those changes gets recorded into the transaction logs. Now, as soon as those changes are recorded into the transaction logs, Golden Gate capture process or extract process reads the data from the transaction logs and captures only committed transactions. Once the transactions are captured, it writes them to the local machine under local trail files. As soon as the data becomes available into local trail, data pump process reads the data out of your local trail, sends it over TCP IP network and writes it to trail file on remote machine, which is also called as remote trail file. Once the data becomes available into remote trail, Golden Gate replicate process reads the data out of your remote trail and apply it to target database. So guys, here, one, note one thing I mentioned Pump process reads the data from the trail file and sends it over TCP IP network. So pump process doesn't transfer the trail file over TCP IP network. It transfers the data which is getting returned into local trail. It transfers that data over TCP IP network and writes it to remote trail on target. So this local trail and remote trail residing on both source and target are different. They are not dependent. They are not same. So 
you will understand as then when as we do the setup you will understand this part but just to let you know pump process doesn't transfer the trail files over tcp ip network it reads the data from the local trail sends it over tcp ip network and writes it to a remote trail on target now the question comes there are a couple of questions how golden gate is platform independent i mentioned earlier that golden gate can replicate the data between heterogeneous platforms as well that means your source can be linux and target can be sun solaris and another question which comes is how is golden gate able to replicate the data in near real time so let me answer both these questions for you so first of all let me answer this how does golden how is golden gate platform independent how does it replicate the data between heterogeneous platforms so the answer to this question lies in these trail files these trail files make golden gate platform independent so the format of the trail file re always remain same either you are generating them on windows or linux or sun solaris or hp unix or any platform you are using golden gate on golden gate golden gate trail file format always remains same so say for example you are generating this trail file on windows and when you transfer the data using pump process to target it will be generated in the same format on linux platform or any other platform so these trail files makes golden gate platform independent another thing is if you generate this trail file on windows server and if you want to transfer it to some other platform that also you can do and it will recognize so the these trail files makes golden gate platform independent another question is how is golden gate able to replicate the data in near real time is so this trail file size is predefined you can define so by default when you create this trail file we'll be creating it when we implement it so this trail files when we create by default the size is 500 mb you can increase it up to 10 gb and you can decrease it up to i think 50 mb or 10 mb i'll have to check so by default it is 500 mb so pump process as i mentioned does not transfer the trail file over tcp ip network so it does not wait the trail file data to remain to it does not wait for trail file to be full up to 500 mb so as soon as data capture process captures the data so as soon as transaction gets committed on source capture process will extract process will capture it and writes it to local trail as soon as it becomes available into local trail at the very same moment pump process will read it and send that transaction over the tcp ip network and write it to remote trail as soon as transaction becomes available into remote trail the replicate process will apply will read the data from the remote trail and will apply it to target database over here so there are three processes involved in golden gate replication extract process data pump process and replicate process each process here is critical for golden gate implementation so if you see here another important point to note here if you see here each process in golden gate has a source to read from and a target to write to so capture process sources transaction logs of the database and target is local trail what is the source of pump process local trail and target is remote trail similarly what is the source of replicate process it is remote trail and target is target database so there are three processes involved in golden gate replication capture pump and delivery capture process captures the data basically it is also called as extract pump process is used for sending the data over tcp ip network the replicate process is used for applying the data to the target database so golden gate 
not only works in unidirectional, it also supports bidirectional replication. So that is another major advantage with Golden Gate that you can use Golden Gate for bidirectional replication as well. So bidirectional replication means your both the sites will be live in Oracle Golden Gate environment. Both the sites will be live in Oracle Golden Gate environment. So in unidirectional, what happens is the application will be connected to only one site and replication will happen to the another site. However, in bidirectional, what happens is both the sites will be live. Application will be connected to site one as well as site two. Transaction can happen on any site and it should be replicated using Golden Gate to another site. So bidirectional, I always say is nothing but two-way unidirectional with some consideration. So bidirectional, just like you have set up Golden Gate replication from site one to site two. Now in bidirectional, both the sites will be source and target. So now when site, when, when application is connected to site two, so site two will become source and site one will become target. In that case, again, whatever changes are happening to the, whatever changes are happening on the site two database, those will be returned into the transaction log. So you will configure golden gate extract process, which will read the data from the transaction logs of site two database and captures only committed transactions. Once the transactions are captured, it will write them to the local trail file on the site two server. Once the data is available into local trail on site two pump process configured on site two will write it to remote trail on site one. And once the data becomes available into remote trail, the replicate process on site one will apply to site one database. So bidirectional is nothing but two way unidirectional. So here capture pump and capture and pump process reside on site two and delivery process reside on site one. So, so the capture and pump are independent of the, this delivery process. Each process in Golden Gate is independent here. So, so the data flow which is happening is capture pump of site A have a corresponding replicate process on site B. Similarly, extract and pump on site B have a corresponding replicate process on site A. So bidirectional is nothing but two way unidirectional with some considerations. Now those considerations we'll be discussing when we do the bidirectional replication setup. So golden gate replication works involves three golden gate processes extract pump and replicate process so this is how your data flow source database transaction logs are read by the capture process captures only committed transactions once those are captured they gets written into local trail pump process reads the data from local trail sends it over tcp ip network and writes them to remote trail and then replicate process apply it to target database now you must be wondering why am i repeating this multiple times guys i'll tell you again this architecture is really very important architecture of oracle golden gate though it seems easy but if you have understood it well most of the setup troubleshooting configuration you can do from this architecture. So whatever troubleshooting setup configuration you will be doing, you will be following this architecture always. Okay. Now I mentioned at the starting, there are two types of extracts available. One is classic and second is integrated. So what is the difference between the two? So Another important thing, if you revise, if you recall, I mentioned that with the introduction of classic, with the introduction of integrated ex, extract, the impact on source database, impact on the database has been reduced uh, significantly. Now, what does that mean? So when the extract process reads the transaction locks directly, which it is doing over here, which it is doing over here, it is called as classic extract so in classic extract the capture process reads the transaction logs of the database directly now what happens in integrated extract or integrated capture so in integrated capture the extract process does not interact or read the 
redo logs or archive logs of database directly. What happens here is there is log mining database which is there in between of your redo logs means transaction logs of database or because this integrated extract is supported only for Oracle database. That's why you see online redo and archive logs. So in the classic extract, the extract process was reading the transaction logs of database directly. However, in case of integrated extract, what happens is there is log miner utility in between, log miner database in between. So whatever changes are happening in the source database, that those changes gets returned into redo logs or archive logs. And the copy of those changes gets returned into the log miner database as well. Now, whatever changes are needed by the extract process, log miner passes on those changes to the extract process in form of LCR. LCR stands for logical change records. LCR stands for logical change records. So whatever changes are needed by the extract process here, extract process instead of reading the transaction logs directly, it receives the changes from the log miner process, log miner database directly. And once it receives those changes, it writes them to the local trail file and then data pumps reads the data from local trail, sends it over TCP IP network and writes them to remote trail files. So here, if you see, the extract process was reading the transaction logs of the database directly. However, here in integrated one, what is happening is there is log miner database copy of all the changes, whatever is getting returned into the transaction logs of the database, copy of those changes get, gets returned into the log miner and then log miner passes on those changes to the extract process in form of LCR. So log my, for creating the log miner, you don't have to do anything from your end. As soon as you register your extract process to the database, the log miner database build happens. So again, we'll see all that part during the configuration session. But just to let you know, log miner is internal to the database, which does this task internally for you. So log miner, whatever changes are needed by the extract process, log miner passes on those changes to the extract process. Now, my question here is, so integrated extract is five times faster than this than the classic capture as per my personal ex whatever tests I have done I have created a lot of scenarios I have done a lot of tests and I have noticed that the capture process if it captures 4000 transactions per second the classic extract integrated extract in the same time can capture up to 20,000 transactions per second so the performance of integrated extract is much better than classic However, my question is, the performance of classic capture seems to be, means if I look at the architecture and in a layman terms when we look. So here, the classic extract is reading the transaction logs of the database directly. However, in case of integrated, there is one more layer in between log miner, which is passing on the changes to the extract process. So how do you think? This is the question to you. So why do you think this performance of integrated capture may be better than classic capture? Did you get my question? Yeah, because it is reading directly from the changes, right? In, from the it's database. Like like reading directly from the redo before writing it to sort of like an archive logs and then passing it over the network. Mm, but the thing is, once the data becomes re gets returned into the uh, redo logs or archives, then only it gets returned into the log miner. So that point I don't think is valid, right? So log miner is not receiving the changes directly. Copy of changes once it gets returned, then log mine then using your 
redo an archive, it gets written into log miner. So I don't think that is making it faster. Anyone else would like to answer? Um, is it something like um, like like classic and integrate both are being being utilizing you know the online do logs and archive logs right at the very first place so uh, is there something um, uh, the parallel processes are being introduced at the log miner part uh, which is not there in the classic correct that is you are going to correct the path which you are following is absolutely correct but yeah there is much more to that i'll be discussing so yeah so the answer so you are somewhat correct but not completely means there is much more addition to it which i'll be doing okay good good, uh, good Ashish, uh, does the log miner process does the job of selecting or something like that um, so stanley i'm not i mean sir my question is to you so i'm expecting the answer i'm not expecting the follow up question anyways i'll be answering this for you later on right so i yeah. want the why do you think it could be faster maybe because uh, what is, uh, the log miner, uh, maybe the log miner does the job of uh, selecting the uh, you know change capture or something like that so you are going again you are going on the correct path so it's not the complete answer but yeah your thinking is correct sir okay so i'll answer this for you now so here we have as i mentioned earlier as well golden gate is a product which is external to the database okay now here the capture process what it was doing is capture process was reading the transaction logs of the database now say for example there are 100 thousand objects in the database or i should say thousand transactions happened into the database now these thousand transactions could be related to your sys system schema or non application schema transactions right which golden gate is which you don't want golden gate to capture because golden gate captures only application transactions okay now the transaction logs will contain all the transactions related to all schemas in the database so those transactions where they will get written they will be part of your transaction logs of the database in case of oracle redo logs or backup of redo logs which are called as archive logs now because it is that now in classic capture what happens is the capture process it is external to the database and it reads the transaction logs in sequential manner so what it has to do is it still has to read these th thousand transactions and after these thousand transactions say for example there are two transactions related to application schema which gg has to capture but to read this to to capture these two transactions is it still has to read these thousand transactions first and then only it can come to these two transactions and then it will capture so the classic capture it reads the transaction logs in sequential manner and it receives it and this uh classic capture has to read all the transactions which are present making it a bit slow however the same task as stanley mentioned same task which was done by classic capture earlier it is done by the log miner so log miner passes on the changes whatever is needed by the extract process in form of lcrs now log miner is a process which is internal to the database this golden gate is external golden gate extract is external to the database however log miner is internal to the database so whatever selection it needs to be done like these thousand transactions which are internal to database which are not needed but only these two transactions are needed by golden gate process so all that task log miner does at its own end because log miner is internal to the database it is able to do that in fast way apart from that this task of mining the log miner when it gets registered they, they it does in it does it in four 
processes so internally there are four processes which gets created preparer then it is builder so there are four processes which are which gets created i don't recall i'll tell you later on so internally as aj had mentioned again so stanley and aj they these two guys answered so so the combination of those two answers is correct so first is the log miner does the data selection does the data selection what used to done by classic and because log miner is internal to the database it does it in fast manner second thing is log miner here does it in four processes so when extract process get registered to the database when you see number of processes being consumed there will be four processes so preparer builder uh i'll tell you in next few minutes about that i i cannot recall exactly what are those processes so so because that is parallel that makes it parallel that is why integrated capture is much faster than classic extract so log miner passes on the changes to the extract process in form of lcrs and then extract process writes writes those changes to local trail which data pump then writes to the remote trail which replicate process then reads and apply to the target database okay so, okay. Um, so shri raman has a question does integrated capture have any advantages over classic yes integrated capture is much faster performance wise apart from that it has uh, so, more data uh, type so, it, it, has, it has more data it has more uh, data type it has more data type support and also it requires less parameters in comparison to classic so the answer to your question is yes it is much answer okay now another question which it which is asked is oh, shri raman you have another other question which will be answered so can these uh, trail files be mined yes you can read the data in these trail files absolutely ready has a can question we, ready has we, a question your database is already generating archive logs why do you need to generate trail files for golden gate why can't you just capture changes at source and apply to target without wasting time in writing changes first to trail files okay so again the answer to that question is ready archive logs are used are the database level concept trail files are golden gate level concept so extract process when it captures it has to write that to some location it 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 has to write those changes for some at some location so it will write them to remote to local trail also it can write to remote trail if you because data pump is optional configuration but we'll be discussing about that later on but yes it needs some storage to write that data to somewhere that is why trail files are needed another thing is trails files are needed for recovery purpose so the answer to your question is yes we are not wasting any time ready don't it's the golden gate architecture it's not waste it it's like for saving the time say for example any issues comes again it is really very helpful yogesh has a question i assume dv version referred applies to source db for extract and refers to target db only for replicate yes correct and okay so all the questions so yeah aj so aj has a question can we control the parallelism of yeah it's not parallelism uh, aj the thing here is you have to understand it's not parallelism there are multiple processes which gets created and you don't have to uh you, there are multiple processes which gets created which make it parallel so you cannot so those processes which are created they are by default you cannot remove or add anything so so it's like ki we have a limitation to increase uh, that 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 it will always be uh, you know four times faster only it, it cannot be 4.5 times or 5 times no, or, it, or, so, or okay. 3.4 times no 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 
the thing here is what i am telling you it is five times faster is as per my experience there this is not like uh, oracle so let's say will, let's uh, let's say it. let's uh, just a sec yeah, just okay. a sec AJ, just a sec because that is very good point because you have mentioned so let me clear guys i mentioned it is almost five times faster so that assumption that calculation what i am giving is as per the test i did it is not mentioned anywhere in as per oracle or anywhere you won't find as per my experience i am telling now it may be possible in some scenarios you may find integrated extract is similar to classic extract in some scenario you may find integrated extract is much more faster than classic it is almost like integ classic extract is capturing the data in 10 minutes for something integrated extract is capturing the same data in 1 second so it is possible so the calculation which i have given is based on my experience based on the test which i did not for every environment but for few scenarios i tested and based on that i am telling you so the purpose of telling you that was integrated extract is much faster than classic extract uh okay i i i um, i got a point but but my my point is like you have you uh, you must have experienced something which which uh, which took you to the point that it is four to five times faster let's let's keep it a eight year number as like five times my my question is uh like if we do not have a parallelism and you said there are some processes which are being uh, you know initiated automatically uh, you know during that, uh, that when the log miner extracts the data uh sorry capture the data right so now uh, if if it is if again, those again, being let me triggered... clear let me clear yeah. log miner does not capture the data log miner receives the change it is a exact copy of your redo logs or archive logs of the database so whatever is getting returned into the redo logs and archive logs everything is getting return into the log miner and then when log miner passes on the changes from when log miner passes on the changes to the extract process in that case those four processes comes into picture preparer builder i'll tell you in next few minutes about this oh okay okay so so that means uh, all right all right so what uh, what i'm able to understand is um, that log miner uh, the filtration is happening at a log miner level let's say you have 1000 transactions only two transactions are need to be uh, addressed in in the classic it has to go through all the all, all the thousand transactions however but in 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 this uh, integrated one uh, the log miner will going to pick up only those two transactions and send it to else uh, send it via lcr and to to the capture process right correct okay okay, okay. absolutely correct, correct. now correct. sumit has a question how to decide in which one we have to use integrated or classic i think i already answered that so i'll again repeat the same answer i al always go with the latest supported so if integrated is supported for your database and golden gate version use the integrated one so whatever is latest one and if it is supported use that one okay ready has a question which all databases does golden gate 12c support so the answer to your question lies in certification matrix so this question will be answered to you in next few minutes Shamant has a question what is the difference between log miner and golden gate so log miner is database level concept golden gate is a separate product okay so next we are going to discuss about is we are going to discuss about installation of oracle golden gate how to this how means which version to download we will be discussing about that as well. Uh, Ashish, uh, I have a question on trail files. Okay, means if yes. we haven't discussed, then I'll pass on that question to later on. But yeah, you can ask your question. Sure, then, uh, sure, sure, sure. No worries. So my question is, uh, like uh, during the trail files, you've mentioned you have got 50 and 500 MB. So is it like we have only one trail file, or do we have multiple trail files? Uh, you will have multiple trail files. Again, the answer this. Question will be more okay. clearer to you when we set up Golden Gate. But the answer to, que to your question is, you will have multiple trails. Okay, and 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 one more thing, like uh, let's say during the process, you know, somehow let's say we have uh, five trail files, and one of the trail files got removed or got deleted, right? So uh, how this uh, transaction will be get covered up, right? Do we need to uh, okay, again? Get we haven't from the gone, archives? We haven't. 
okay that will come to to the setting up of golden gate so this is completely troubleshooting question so that question will be covered during later parts okay okay fair enough all these questions will be covered don't worry so related to architecture there are three processes involved okay so one question which is being asked from me is about the licensing okay so guys there are two types of architectures in golden gate let me go back to that slide back that slide again there are two types of architectures classic and microservices and then there is another product in golden gate family which is called as very data so one question which is being asked from me is licensing part so guys i'm not a oracle guy so any licensing query i'm answering here i'm answering based on my discussion with oracle but that is not a final answer any discrepancy in answer between oracle and me if you find oracle answer will be take will take precedence so whatever i am telling you as per my experience discussion with oracle i am telling you because the product is owned by oracle so please check with oracle again with them so oracle golden gate is an is a licensed product so when you buy the license of oracle golden gate you can either choose classic or microservices any of the two is okay so as per my ex- uh, and, uh, uh, discussion with oracle if you have licenses in of oracle golden gate you can choose either classic or microservices whatever you want to choose for very data it's a separately licensed product so if you want to use very data in your environment in your work environment you will have to buy separate licenses for oracle golden gate very data very data is a management pack product and you will have to buy the separate licenses for it now again the licenses depends on your source and target database cores so say for example you, the, the golden gate is connecting to source database which is 4 cpu and tar- target database is 8 cpu so you will need 12 cpu licenses for it so you need to buy licenses for oracle golden gate and when you buy the licenses you can either use classic architecture or microservices architecture very data you will have to again buy separate licenses now what is the cost of it you will have to check with oracle account manager because it depends on code your relation with oracle how much they charge you for it okay okay this conference will now be recorded so these are the four processes which are involved here in uh, when in integrated capture so reader preparer builder and capture and then the changes are passed on to the extract process so reader basically reads the data preparer prepares the data builder builds the data and then the capture happens and then those changes are passed on to the extract process in form of lcr so when you configure golden gate extract process and when you see number of processes when you configure golden gate integrated extract and when you see number of processes being created at the database level you will find it there will be four processes so why four these four processes reader preparer builder and capture which forms your integrated extract these are the processes which forms your integrated extract okay okay so now next is let us move up or move on to the installation of oracle golden gate now before moving to golden gate installation it is very important then you that you check the certification metrics prior to moving to installation always do ensure that you are checking the certification metrics and then you are downloading the correct version which is certified with your platform and database as well okay so before you proceed to install oracle before you proceed to download oracle golden gate what thing you have to note down is so this was the thing i was forgetting so reader preparer builder and capture which runs okay now before moving to download 
Oracle Golden Gate. What things you have to note down before you move to download. First thing you have to note down is source, database, version, and platform. You have to note down source database, version, source database, type, version, and platform. You have to note down. Similarly, you have to note down target database type, version, and platform as well. So before you proceed, you have to note these three things down. So in our case, we are the virtual boxes which are shared. So we have got Gate 1 and Gate 2. If you have not set it up, I will tell you at the end of today's session how to set those up. So the virtual boxes we have, we need to check what type of OS we have. So because Golden Gate binaries are separate for different databases and different platforms. So, so if I do uname hyphen A, so it is Linux, Enterprise Linux 6 we are using and 64 bit it is. So source database type is Oracle. Version is 12C, which 12.2 basically. And platform is Linux x86 64. So our source database type is Oracle 12.2 Linux x86 64. Similarly, target is also same. So target database type is Oracle 12.2 and Linux x86 64. It's enterprise Linux 6 we have. It's enterprise Linux 6 we have. So you can note that down. Okay. Now once you have done that, once you have noted this thing down, what is the next step? So in your case, say for example, you are replicating the data from between different platforms. So your target will be the platform of target in that case. So it depends what type of source and target platform you have based on that you will be downloading the version now next step is you need to check the certification matrix to see if this is supported or not so certification matrix to download the certification matrix you can do you can google out oracle fusion middleware certification matrix golden gate is a fusion middleware product that's why so you need to search oracle fusion middleware certification matrix once you do that it will take you to this link select the first link oracle golden oracle fusion middleware supported cert system configurations now here so here you will find different certification metrics like for 21C you will see certification metrics but I, I don't see the binaries are available for on-prem. For cloud services yes 21C is supported but for on-prem 21C is still not the, the binaries are still not there. So we are not going to check the certification metrics of 12C still 19C is there. So we'll check the 19C. I always say one thing guys always go with the latest version. Okay so download the 19c certification matrix and see whether your database type and version is supported if it is not supported download 18c if 18c is not supported then download 12.3 if 12.3 is not supported then download for 12.2 so you can find all golden gate certification matrix over here in fact 11g r1 certification matrix is also there so if you want to check you can check similarly very data certification matrix is also there you can find certification matrix for all products fusion middleware products over there so now the question again is which version should we use so always use the latest supported version so check the check the latest 19c version supported certification matrix so i'll download it so it's, it's it will open in excel so it is really very important. I, what I have seen many people 
what they do is they install the product first and then later on they identify that it is not supported so i'll open the certification matrix for 19c I'm waiting for it to open. I'll open the certification matrix of 19C. So here if you see the certification matrix has opened. So click on this golden gate part here. Click on this golden gate part. Okay, now here you will find the certification matrix over here. This is the certification matrix. So here you will have to check based on your version, platform and type. So if you see here, this is Oracle Golden Gate 19.1 processor type is here. So you will see over here what all this 19C supports. So it supports different type of OS version like Oracle Linux. This is Windows it supports. Then it supports IBM AIX 7.2. Similarly, it supports the IBM AIX 7.2. So you can find over here. If you go, if you if I if you run the filter, you can find what type of OS it supports. You can see over here. Similarly, different databases what it supports. So the databases it supports is MySQL, Postgres, MariaDB it supports, MySQL it supports. Oracle it supports Postgres, Postgres, SQL Server, My, so these are on Azure. Then Inscribe and SQLMP it supports, IBM DB2 it supports. So it supports all this database. Now here we don't see MongoDB. So check certification matrix of 18C. Similarly check certification matrix of 12C. So if, if you find that it supports under certification matrix that means it supports otherwise it don't. Okay. So this 19C support these many databases. Now in our case, first of all, we have to select Oracle database because our database is Oracle. So I'll deselect all. So I'll just select Oracle database because mine is Oracle. Now say for example, your database is SQL Server. So select SQL Server. So when I do a Oracle database and then I'll do the filter based on processor type. So my processor type is Linux x86 64. So now the search is confined to this. My search is now confined to this. So now what I'm going to do is I have to check my OS is RHEL 6, right? So yeah, 19C supports RHEL 6. That's okay. Linux x86 64 and it supports database version 11 to 04, 12.1.0, 12.1.0.2, 12.2 it supports and 18C it supports. So yeah, I'm good with it. So it remember it doesn't support database version 19C. So does this mean Golden Gate 19C does not support Oracle database 19C? What do you think? Did you get my question? So I see that my supported version is RHEL 6 means my data, my platform is RHEL 6. Okay. And the database version I see 19C is not listed. So does it mean Golden Gate 19C does not support database 19C? Can anyone answer this question for me? Or would anyone like to answer this question? I mean, it doesn't support the combination. I think so, you know. It exactly. supports Red so Hat thing, 7. So the thing is, this OS version 19... is not basically uh, supported 19C. Only yeah, so 18C. No, it so they support 19C. Yeah. Wait, let me answer. Support... Let me answer. And 19. So, yeah, this combination. Yeah. So database 19C itself is not supported on RHEL 6. That right. is the reason. So for for using database 19C. You need to have, if you check the certification matrix of Oracle database 19C. Okay, so you will find over there 
that the certification metric says that for using Oracle database 19C, you, you have to have RHEL 7. Okay, so in our case, RHEL 6 is there and database version is 12.2. So we are good. So we can download Oracle Golden Gate 19C. Oh, just in case now the question comes, say for example, if you are unable to find your uh, Golden Gate version over here, means in this 19C you are unable to find your supported database or platform, what to do? Then check 18C binaries. If that is also not supported, then check 12C binaries. Okay. Okay. So let us move to next. So now once we have uh, identified which version we have to download, we have to download 19C. So as I mentioned again, which version should we go with? Always go with the latest supported version. Okay. Now once we have identified that part, next step is we'll be downloading Oracle Golden Gate. How do we download? So download Oracle Golden Gate. Go to Google type download Oracle Golden Gate. Click on first link, Oracle Golden Gate downloads. Once you go over there, you will find different binaries. So as I mentioned, 21C certification matrix is there, but you won't find 21C binaries for, so 21C is released for cloud, Golden Gate cloud services, which was launched in April 2021. So 21C has been released for there, but for regular use, it is not, still not there. So still we'll be working on, nine. so 19C is considered to be latest Golden Gate version. Now, when you go come over here, remember one thing, Golden Gate binaries are different for different platforms and different database. So if you see, this binary is for Oracle Golden Gate for Oracle on AIX. So this is for AIX. Now, another thing is, as I told, there are two types of architecture, classic and mic mi microservices. So binaries for each type of architecture is different. So classic has different binaries and microservices have different binaries. So when you see Oracle Golden Gate, that means it is classic architecture binaries. And when you see microservices written, that means it's a microservices related binaries. So for this session, because this is classic architecture, so we are going to use this first binary. We are going to download this first binary. Now the thing is, we have to ensure we are downloading the correct binary, correct platform. So this is for AIX, so definitely we cannot download. So ours is this, Oracle Golden Gate 19.1.0.0.4 for Oracle on Linux x86-64. So we'll be downloading this particular binary oracle golden gate 19.1.0.0.4 for oracle on linux x86 if you see you will find this is the binary for oracle on solar solarix path similarly this is the binary for db2 luw on aix so this is for db2 db2 database similarly these are the binaries for sql server on windows this is for MySQL on Linux. This is for MySQL on Windows. These are the binaries for Teradata which are there. Then this is the binary for times 10. Now just in case, say for example, on this page, you are unable to find the binary which you are looking for or the version which you are looking for. Or if you are if you're looking for older version, then you can download the binary from edelivery.oracle.com. So you also have edelivery.oracle.com from where you can download all the binary so if i go to i'm oh sorry i misspelled it e delivery.oracle.com so when i go to e delivery.oracle.com and sign in over here Here you, you can type Oracle Golden Gate. So you will find over here, Oracle Golden Gate 21.3, 21.1. Okay, so they have made it available over here. It must be recent only, I'm not sure. Okay, it must be recent only then. So still, I haven't used it, okay. So it's available, 21C is available on e-delivery. It's not available over Oracle website, OTN. So, and I haven't used it. So we'll go with 19C right now. So you can see 19C binaries over here. So click on 19C. Now 
Up here, once you have added it, click on view items and then you can proceed to download the item. Okay, so, so you can select the platform over here for which platform you want to download it. Select the platform like ours is Linux x86 x64. We can download it. Once downloaded, you can transfer it to your machines and then your download is completed. So you will be using these. You can use this uh, downloaded software in your environment. You can use this downloaded software in your environment. Okay. Now I have already downloaded this uh, Oracle Golden Gate version in our environment in these virtual boxes. So the download is already this, the, the softwares are pretty small. They are five, they are ranging from 500 to 700 MB. So if your speed is good, it should not take much time to download. Now, once you have downloaded, you can transfer them onto the machines, whatever machine you are using. Now in our case, we have already, I have already put the binaries under slash home slash Oracle slash softwares location. So the, the virtual box, if you are using the training provided virtual boxes. So these training provided virtual boxes already have Golden Gate binaries, 19C present. So you will find classic binaries over here, microservices binaries over here, as well as very data binaries over here. So the binaries are presented under, under slash home slash oracle slash software. So if you are using training provided binaries, you don't need to transfer the binaries of 19C if you want to use 19C. And if you are using any other VM, then definitely you will have to download and transfer the binaries. You can use WinSCP or any other file transfer uh, protocol to transfer the binaries. Now, once the binaries are transferred, Okay, so I have transferred it to this location, OGG classic 19C binaries. So once we have checked the certification matrix, so this is really very important step guys. When you transfer the binaries before you proceed with installation or before you proceed with download, always ensure to check the certification matrix. This is one of the common mistake I have seen many people make, like many experienced people also make this mistake. I'll tell you, even if you install and you get that error message, I agree you can correct that mistake. But there are two things. You waste your time. And second thing is, as a Golden Gate administrator, it doesn't give good impression when you are using, as a professionally, uh, as a professional, it doesn't give you, give good impression to others that you are making these small mistakes. Okay, so when you are working on any technology, whether it is Golden Gate, any technology informatica database always ensure you spend you take out some time to check the certification matrix before you proceed to download and install okay now once the download is made we can proceed with installation of oracle golden gate so the binaries of oracle golden gate when you download they come in zipped format like this so first thing before you proceed with download you have to do you have to make note of few things you have to decide which mount point or directory you are going to download it. Hello? You are going to install it with. And second thing is space needed in the mount point. Right. And third thing is which user you are going to use. OS user you are going to use to install, right? So which mount point or directory you can, you are going to install it in? You can either choose separate mount point or you can choose existing directory. So you can either choose separate mount point like slash golden gate or you can use existing location. Existing location if I have to choose. So in our VM what I can do is I can install it in existing location. So I'm going to install it in U01 app Oracle. Here, I'll create one directory called as gg underscore src. Okay, so I'll be installing Oracle Golden Gate in this location. Okay. 
So I'm going to install Oracle Golden Gate in U01 app Oracle GG underscore SRC on source. Similarly, on target, yes. you will have to create a separate yes. directory. You will have to create separate directory on directory target. Okay. Now. Once you have done that, which directory you have to install? So, existing. Second thing is how much space you need. So you will need space. So ensure you have ensure you have sufficient space no. available in your Oracle Golden Gate environment. In your Oracle Golden Gate directory to work on. So ensure you have sufficient space now how do you decide how much space you need how how do you decide how much space is needed in your golden gate mount point how will you decide that so the answer to your question comes with design and analysis of oracle golden gate when you do design and analysis of oracle golden gate this question will be answered for you you did oh, can you please you know mute yourself so during the design part during the design part what you have to do is you have to understand say for example i'll i'll do this part in detail during the later part of the session but just to give you an overview how much space you need so what you need to do is you know you have to analyze source database you have to analyze your source database so what you will do is for first of all you have to make an agreement with business for how many days data you want to keep so say for example you decided that you want to keep 7 days data now what you will do you will analyze your source database for last 60 days you will analyze the redo generated in last 60 or 30 days i would say go with the go with 60 days okay now in last 60 days identify what is the maximum redo generated in one single day so say for example maximum redo generated in one single day was 30 gb so we'll take that as maximum redo which will which can generate in one day now 30 gb into 7 because we need to give we need to keep 7 days trail file so i'll need 210 gb of space based on my current analysis and because when I analyze, when I design Golden Gate, I have to keep future in mind. So I'll also add minimum 50 to 100 percent of space required. So when I request, I'll request for space in between of 350 GB to 450 GB. So my mount point would be needed for 350 and 350 to 450 GB. So this again the space you need will depend upon your analysis depend on the database you are working on so as i mentioned the with business you have an agreement to keep seven days trail files so for keeping seven days trail files identify how much redo have been generated in last seven days maximum re in last 60 days maximum redo which has been generated then multiply that with seven means many the days for which you have to keep the trail files with so 30 into 7 is 210 then keeping future in mind add additional space for that now another thing is some organizations based on my experience again i'm telling you if i ask for 1000 gb they will give me 500 gb of space if i ask for 50 GB, some may give me 200 GB. So it depends on that. So again, if you want 350 to 450 GB and if your organization questions you a lot, then in that case, you may need to ask for 700 GB and then you will get your 300 or 400 GB, to 400 GB. But this is what I'm telling you based on my experience, guys. Okay. But yeah, again, 
it depends on your environment so it, it is possible that for seven days when you ask for this much amount of space they may question that why why don't you want to consider minimum redo which has been generated so minimum redo generated in a single day could be 1 gb right and when you take that in account 1 into 7 would be 7 gb so can they assure you that the trail files would not be for seven days if they want to keep they don't need more than 20 gb of space right so they may question you for this like if you are asking for 700 GB, 800 GB or 500 GB. But you should be ready with your calculation set. You are keeping future in mind because your database size will grow in future, right? Definitely it is not going to decrease if it's an organization. Correct. So you need to identify how much space you need. You should have that much space. And then which user you should be installing it with? So you can, which OS user, which you, you should be installing it with. So you can use Oracle. Or you can create any user like DG admin or DG user or any other user which should be part of the DBA. So you can create, you, you can install Oracle Golden Gate with any OS level user which could be Oracle or create a new user which has a DBA which is part of the DBA. Okay, so once you have all those things done, you can proceed to install Oracle Golden Gate in your environment. Then you can proceed to install Oracle Golden Gate in your environment. Okay, so now let us proceed. So I'll go to Gate 1. Now in our case, Gate 1 is going to act as source and Gate 2 will act as target. So password is welcome one W in small letters. Okay, so I'm going, I have identified that I'm going to install Golden Gate in this location. If I check this space, I have this much space available, which is good for this training. This is not production, this is training and development. So this is okay. Similarly, I'm going to install it with Oracle user. Okay, once I have done that, what I'll do, I'll go to binary location slash home slash oracle slash softwares location. I'll go to gg ogg underscore classic underscore 19c binaries. Here it comes in zipped format. So I'll unzip it. Unzip 19.1.0.0.4 ship home gg. Dot zip. So guys, another thing is the VMs which you have received. Okay. The VMs which you have received, the golden, the database is already installed. Database is already installed under the database home is slash home slash oracle slash product oracles u0 oh sorry u01 app oracle product 12.2 so this is the Oracle home. So go, database is installed. However, database is not created on this VMs. So you need to create the <coughs> database using DBCA. Go to bin and you can create the database using DBCA over here. I'll tell you after some time, but you can create the database. So I have already created the database over here. The database which I have created is OGG DB1. It's a multi tenant database which I have created. So the database which I have created is with the name OGG DB1 and the pluggable database name is PDB1. I have already created. Okay. Plus slash SS DB. So in the VMs which you have received, you will have to create this database using DBCA. Why I don't create the database? The reason being you may want to create the database with non multi tenant architecture. So if you want to create the database with non-multi-tenant architecture, you, you can create. But if you have to decide which one you have to create, like if you don't have any specification, I would suggest create the database with multi-tenant architecture. So select name from V dollar database. So database, container database is OGGDB1. And 
<coughs> the pluggable database is created with the name pdb okay so database is already created now okay so now we'll proceed with golden gate installation so i have unzipped the binaries so binaries are unzipped in this location so we'll go to this location fbo ggs home go to disk one now golden gate installation is pretty easy now i'll run this run installer so let me set the display xos plus and let me run run install so when i run the run installer it will do some checks like temp space check swap space check also it will check the display once everything is passed it will open the gui for you o o u i not gui i should say o u i which is oracle universal installer for you hello Hello, no, she's sorry. Somebody is uh, still. Someone is keeping the. You know, somebody not uh, muting themselves. You know, we can hear the background noise. No, it's my daughter who has just. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. There is okay. There is. I thought somebody else. Okay. Okay, so it will. So once the OUI comes up, we'll proceed with the installation of Oracle Golden Gate. So for before proceeding to installation of Oracle Golden Gate, always ensure you are moving. You are checking the certification matrix, and then you are downloading the Oracle Golden Gate. Mm. Hey, OUI. Similarly, on Gate two as well. In the meanwhile, our OUI is coming up. On Gate two as well, we need to follow the same instructions what we have discussed. So first, we have to identify the mount point or directory where we are going to install Oracle Golden Gate. So again, on Gate two as well, I have created pluggable da container database OGGDB two and pluggable database PDB two over here. Okay, now. Here again in Gate two, you will find the binaries uh, under slash home slash oracle slash softwares. You will find the binaries. So let me go to u zero one app oracle. Now here I will create the directory gg underscore trg where my golden gate will be installed. Okay, and then now I'll go to u zero one sorry slash home. Slash Oracle slash softwares OGG underscore classic 19C binaries unzip the binaries and then you can invoke the OUI. Okay, so on Gate one we have got the installation wizard over here. Now this Oracle Golden Gate 19C. When we check the certification matrix, we saw it supports your 11G, 12C, 18C, and 19C Oracle database. So you have to select here which database you are going to use this Golden Gate for. So if you are going to, if your Oracle database is 19C, select Oracle database, Oracle Golden Gate for Oracle database 19C. If your database is 18C, select Oracle Golden Gate for Oracle database 18C. If your database is 12C, which in our case is, so we are going to use this Oracle Golden Gate for Oracle database 12C over here. Remember, guys, you are selecting the correct database version for which you want to use this Golden Gate. The reason is when when you log into Golden Gate prompt, it looks for the libraries of the database. Hence, the the Version over here which you select has to be proper. Otherwise, your Golden Gate will not work properly. You will not be able to log into your Golden Gate prompt properly. Okay, so our Golden Gate version which we are going to use over here is Oracle Golden Gate for Oracle Database 12C. So we are going to select this third version over here. Third option over here. Click on Next.
now it is asking for the software location so software location is where you want to install this oracle golden gate so our oracle golden gate is going to install in u u01 we created the directory right so same u01 app oracle gg underscore src so we are going to install golden gate over here now next thing is we saw the architecture of golden gate we discuss about architecture of oracle golden gate that it involves three processes capture pump and delivery along with that there is one more process in oracle golden gate which is called as manager process manager process manages this golden gate environment okay hence during the installation you will see that manager it is asking whether you want to start the manager so remember one thing each golden gate installation comes with one manager each golden gate will have one and only one manager manager process runs on a port so at the starting while installation it is asking you to check whether you want to start the manager if you don't want to start the manager you can untick this box and if you want to start you can do that so i'm choosing this start manager next is it ask for the database location when you want to start the manager it ask you for the database location by basically the database home. so it has automatically picked up the database lo home location oracle home location which is this and this is the manager port on which manager will run on. so you can provide any port for manager to run on this port can be anything just ensure nothing else is running on this port number so default port which manager uses it 7809 so it's not mandatory that you use this port you can choose any other port 7810 7820 9999 any other port ensure nothing is running on that port so i'm using the 7809 click on next check the summary okay now if you want to do silent installation also you can save this response file as well you can save this response like file like i'll use it in u01 app oh i'll look at i'll save this response file in the same location uh, okay i'll use it in slash u, i'll save it in slash u01 location okay so response file i have saved and then click on install so response file you create and use for silent installation like in some environment this gui is not enabled or allowed so in that case you can do the silent installation as well so if i have to look the content of silent sorry response file so i'll go to u0 slash u01 so i'll do cat ogg code.rsp so whatever uh, responses we have gain, given in vi ogg code.rsp so if you see whatever responses we have given so do not change the following system generated value that's okay so install option is ora 12c because we have databases 12c if it is 18c select ora 18 ora 19c similarly software location is where you want to install golden gate similarly start manager it is to manager port so you can use this response file to install this in other environments okay you can edit this and take it to any environment once you have done that your installation will start and installation of golden gate doesn't take much time so it will be done quickly So it is almost 90% completed. So it says the installation of Oracle Golden Gate was successful. So the installation of Oracle Golden Gate is done now on source. So where it is done? If I go to U01 app. u01 app oracle 
and here i have got gg underscore src i'll go to location uh, gg underscore src i'll find my database my golden gate binaries being present in this particular location so if i do ls hyphen lart now i see my golden gate binaries are present over here now how to log into golden gate prompt there is a ggsci prompt so to do ls hyphen lart ggsci so you will find ggsci over here ggsci stands for golden gate software command interface so this is the classic architecture so to log into ggsci to ggsci you will be logged into golden gate prompt so to see what all golden gate processes are present in your environment do info all info all is the command will list out what all golden gate processes are present so each golden gate installation comes with a manager there is only one and only one manager present now i see the status of manager is running over here how come did i start the manager how how the manager is running is selected exactly because during the installation of oracle golden gate i selected start manager hence as a result manager is running now how to check on which port it is running you can do info mgr so when you do info mgr it shows you that it is running on port 7809 and the os process id is 12839 now each process in golden gate has a parameter file associated to it same with manager so the port number which we have provided has gone into the manager parameter file so if you do view param mgr so here you will see port 7809 has been created so we provided port 7809 detail over there each remember one thing and this thing will be more clearer to you later on when we discuss about parameter so parameter files are the heartbeat in oracle golden gate each process in golden gate has a process parameter file and golden gate processes runs according to parameters provided in parameter file so as as soon as we gave the port number the parameter file was created hence you see port 7809 okay now if i exit from here under golden gate home this is the golden gate home under golden gate home i see so many directories being created like dir chk dir sql dir wlt tmp dmp dir def dir dat dir crd dir prm dir rpt dir pcs so each directory is very critical for oracle golden gate dir chk stores the checkpoint files of oracle golden gate dir wallet stores the wallet for security purpose which we'll be creating later on dir dat stores the trail files whatever trail files are created we'll be storing them under dir dat as i told you extract process captures the data writes them to the trail file so where does those trail file resides these trail files will reside inside dir dat then similarly dir crd is the credential store directory which stores the credential store again for security purpose dir prm stores the parameter file like you saw that view param mgr so where did that parameter file reside so parameter file reside inside dir prm directory when i do ls hyphen lart you see mgr dot prm got automatically created when we started the manager okay so when we do view param mgr it basically shows you the content from mgr dot prm so if i see the content from mgr dot prm you can see same content is there what you see in the view dot view param mgr similarly you have dir rpt dir rpt is report file of each process whenever process goes down or whenever process runs you will see report file of the process dir pcs it stores the process status related information so all these things will become clear clearer to you as and when we move forward just but just to let you know the directories are really very critical for golden gate installation golden gate setup similarly there is one ggserr.log so ggserr.log is golden gate error log file so it is kind of alert log of oracle golden gate i call it as alert log of oracle golden gate so whatever command whatever happens in oracle golden gate environment 
everything gets returned into vi ggscrr dot log so whatever happens in oracle golden gate environment gets returned over here so as i mentioned it is kind of an alert log of oracle golden gate environment okay okay so we did info all we did info mgr so everything is here now let us move to golden gate installation on gate 2 So I'll go to FBO GGS Linux, disk one. So this is my target. Now I'll run, run installer over here. So here, when we install Oracle Golden Gate, I won't select that option of uh, creating the, starting the manager and see what happens with that, okay? So whenever you launch your OUI, it does the temp check, space, temp check, space, swap space, display check or everything. So you can also do silent installation. To run the silent installation, you can run run installer and provide the silent uh, option and provide the location of response file. Okay, so this is Oracle Golden Gate. It is asking for select the database for which you want to use this Oracle Golden Gate installation. So our target is also 12.2. So I'll select this third option. Click on next. Provide the location U01 app Oracle GG underscore TRG. Now I'll, I won't select the start manager option over here. Okay. Then click on next. So on Gate 2 when I'm installing, I'm not selecting the option of starting the manager. Click on install over here. So Golden Gate installation is now in progress. So Golden Gate installation is not difficult guys, but there are few issues which I have seen which I hope you won't be making upon completion of this session, like checking the certification matrix, ensuring you have sufficient space, ensuring you are installing it with correct OS user, and you, ha you have defined correct mount point or location where you want to install your activity. Okay, so you ensure that you have all those stuffs So one question which is being asked is, can manager port be changed later? Yes, you can change the man manager port. Another question which is being asked is, what is the recommend, recommended best practice? Separate or owner for GG or same as Oracle user? So the answer to this question is, the best practice depends on the environment. You can choose the separate user or Oracle user. So the thing is, Say for example, you you have segregated responsibilities between Golden Gate administrator and database administrator. In that case, you will have to create a separate user. However, if in your environment DBAs are going to manage your Golden Gate, then you can use Oracle. So it depends upon the organization. Okay. Now, yeah, Kelvin has mentioned a separate user is generally followed practice. It's not a generally followed practice, but yeah, it's you can call it as a means. I, again, in my opinion, both are both are. You can choose any of them depending on your environment. Now, Udayan is asking, can manager port be changed later? Absolutely, you can choose change the manager port later on if you are if you want to do that. Possible to create Golden Gate image. 
possible to create gold image for gg for cloning purpose yes you can you can use golden gate for uh cloning purpose as well okay so golden uh, gate Ashish, installation uh, golden gate Ashish, installation Ashish. on gate 2 is also successful so now when i go to the location where golden gate is installed u01 app oracle gg underscore trg if i gg underscore trg it is if i do ls hyphen lart over here so i see golden gate is installed over here now to log into golden gate what command i need to run i need to run ggsci so i'll run ggsci now so i'll be logged into golden gate prompt now do info all once i do info all i see that manager is stopped over here why not selected at the time of installation exactly because i selected the option not started that's why manager is stopped also if i exit from here if i do ls hyphen lart now I don't see those directories like dir 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 chk dir rpt being present over here. Why? The reason being when I select the option of start manager, when I select the option of start manager, at that moment automatically the directories get created. But now because I didn't select that option of starting the manager hence as a result you won't find those directories created okay so now do i need to create those directories manually <clears throat> now what you can do is go to ggsci go to ggsci and do Execute the command create sub DIRs. <laughs> so once I do create sub DIRs, you will see that <laughs> sub directories have been created in the location gg underscore trg. All these directories like dir, prm, dir, rpt, dir, chk, dir, pcs have been created successfully. So now if I exit from here, and do ls hyphen lart i see all the directories have been created all those directories are now part of my golden gate all those directories are now part of my golden gate home now if i log into ggsti again so guys do you see one thing if i go to gate one and check alert log again viggsrr.log you will see that create sub dirs happens automatically create sub dirs happens automatically when i start the mgr but because i didn't chose starting the manager that's why it didn't happen over here now what i have to do over here is i have to start the manager so can i go ahead and start the manager what do you think? Can I go ahead and start the manager now? Yes. You need to define the port first. Exactly. If I go ahead and start the manager, it won't start because I, I haven't defined the manager port. And where do I define the manager port? I define it in the mgr.pm. So I first need to create the mani uh, the parameter file for manager. How do I create the manage the parameter file for the process in Golden Gate from GGSCI? Do edit param process name. So the process name is MGR. So I'll do edit param MGR. Now here I'll provide port and the port number of And I provide the port number on which manager process will run. And I'll define the port number on which the manager is going to run. So on Gate one I chose 7809. 
on gate 2 as well if you want you can choose the same port because these are different machines just ensure nothing else is running on this machine on that port or if you want to choose the separate port you can do so purposefully i'm choosing the separate port so that later on you understand where which one to use where but the answer to the question can i use the same port number on two different machines of course you can okay so here i'm providing the port number for manager on target as 7810 Now once you have done that, can I now go ahead and start the manager? Yes, I can. So do start MGR, and now your manager will start. See, so info all gives me the list of all processes which are present in Oracle Golden Gate environment. Now you see, manager process is running successfully. Okay, so Golden Gate installation for Golden Gate installation. Prior to moving to installation, you have to decide which path you have to install which user you need to install it with and how much space you need once you have done all that you will be good so next question which comes is which server we need to install we'll be discussing that in next session so like golden gate is also used as so we have done this local installation of golden gate so local installation means we have installed golden gate on the server where database resides now is it possible to install oracle golden gate on the different servers where database server doesn't reside or basically we call it as a hub so the answer to that question is yes it is possible you can do that so what are the different options to install oracle golden gate and how to decide where to install golden gate we'll be discussing that in the next session okay so for today's session so in the next session we are going to discuss about uh, ashish uh, this ajay here so just have okay, one no, question wait 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 let me complete i'll give you chance to ask the question so if you have urgent question post it in the chat window guys and i request everyone to keep yourself on mute when you are not speaking and i will give you chance to ask the question none of your question will remain unanswered guys remember but yeah you have to cooperate with me just unmute yourself whenever i am asking you to do apart from that keep yourself muted and if you have any urgent question post it in the chat window i'll answer that okay okay now so in the next session we are going to dis discuss about decide where to install oracle golden gate what are prerequisite to set up oracle golden gate what is supplemental logging and type of supplemental logging also we'll be discussing about golden gate process data flow so we'll be setting up golden gate extract data pump and replicate processes to set up the golden gate replication so as a practice for this session what steps you have to do what are the tasks assigned for this session is set up the lab set up your gate 1 and gate 2 okay i'll be discussing about that now how do you set up those then create the database on gate 1 and gate 2 preferably you you uh, create og multi tenant database if you if you if you want to decide which what type of database should you be creating so create the multi tenant database then create the application schemas and tables which i'll be discussing again and then install oracle golden gate on gate 1 and gate 2 and then in the next session we'll be proceeding from here so if i have to quickly recap what we have discussed today we started with introduction to oracle golden gate we discussed about introduction then we discussed about different types of architecture of oracle golden gate which is classic architecture and microservices architecture then we discussed about what is oracle golden gate very data then why do you need oracle golden gate then what are different types of processes extract process and replicate processes available in golden gate then we discussed about oracle golden gate installation so so that golden gate training vm has 12.2 database and golden gate 19c binaries present under slash home slash oracle slash softwares so we proceeded we, we discussed about before download and installation of golden gate what you know need to note down then once you have noted that down then check the certification metrics 
you can check the certification metrics from this location you can either google out or you can check the certification metrics the direct link is here then invoke the run installer to download the oracle golden gate once you have done that pro before proceeding with installation you need to define separate mount point or existing mount point and how much space and which user you need to install it with. once you have done that then you can do the gui installation of or silent installation of oracle golden gate on both gate 1 and gate 2 and we discussed about different directories present in oracle golden gate okay so there are total three processes involved in oracle golden gate capture which is also called as extract data pump process and delivery or replicate processes okay so we have installed our oracle golden gate on source under u01 app oracle product gg underscore src and on target under gg underscore trc and the database which are created are Container database is OGGDB1, pluggable database PDB1 is created on GGAT1 and target side container database is created as OGGDB2 and pluggable database is PDB. Okay, so guys for as a practice for this session you have to complete your lab for this session. Also, you have to uh, install Oracle Golden Gate, create the database, and create application schemas and table sets. Okay, so we are going to have next session next week, same timing. So for the link of the session, it will be shared with you over WhatsApp as well as calendar invite as well. Okay, so next we are going to discuss about setting up of lab and training guidelines so if you guys like uh, uh, i'll be discussing about that so because our time is up so if you want to anyone want to drop off they can drop off and if you want to continue it will take around 30 more minutes i guess or 15 to 30 more minutes we'll be discussing in the meanwhile so whatever queries you have let me take so first i'll take the questions posted in chat window so I'll take those questions first of all. So Shibin is asking in bi-directional replication how a single table object is managed by both Golden Gate instances. So Shibin, again, my answer to that question would be we haven't reached up to that point. It's still up till installation. So I'll park that question later on. Yogesh has a question. Just does the DG extract process require any permission to mine redo log file, etc. at OS level or does the extract process run under source DB Oracle account? as it connects to source database using TNS and source database credential. That is a very good question. So that is why we need to create the OS user, what we mentioned with the DBA group. So the OS, whatever user you are installing Oracle Golden Gate with, it should be part of the DBA group. That is the only thing what you need to do. That is a very good question, Yogesh. I really like that question. Okay. Yeah, actually, now, my question was more in reference to hub architecture. When yeah, uh, same thing again. You guess that part hub architecture. That part I'll be discussing okay. in the next session. But yeah, I, what, I understood your question. I absolutely understood your question, and the answer to your question is yes to that. You don't need to provide any separate permission. Just ensure any OS user you are providing. So any OS user you are creating that should be part of the DBA. Okay. Is that is that to access the Oracle DLS, Oracle client, or is it to access redo logs? Uh, it is to access the redo logs. However, if you are installing Oracle Golden Gate in Hub, in that case, to access the TNS, etc., you need it like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Shibin again has the question: Do the create data file table space command its action will be replicated at target Golden Gate environment? So, Golden Gate supports the ddl replication as well along with DM, dml replication so ddl replication replicates can replicate your table space command as well not the data file command. now venkat has a question again very good question can i install and run two gg servers on same box using two different manager ports absolutely you can do that venkat that is really possible now 
now depending upon database version at source and target can the source and target can be of different golden gate version this is very good question shibin yes absolutely so the major advantage with golden gate is your source database can be 19c target can be 12c golden gate can replicate the data similarly source database can be 12c target can be 19c golden gate can replicate the data similarly your source golden gate version can be 19c target can be 12c golden gate can get replicate the data your source can be 11g target can be 19c 12c golden gate can replicate the data so golden gate supports backward and forward compatibility as well in terms of database as well as golden gate as well now application schema yes it is present what are the changes differences between 19c and 12c architecture architecture wise they remain same there is no difference in golden gate architecture golden gate architecture remains same since 10g so there is no different okay now yeah any question so, ashish uh, yeah ashish ajay here so yeah, ashish um, like uh, we have done two uh, like right now we have just done the classic uh, setup right so we'll be doing the microservices as well or do we have any any difference between those two like you know to between the manageability and you know configuring part side so microservices is a different part this is a classic architecture training so we are discussing about classic microservices classic only. we discuss during in microservices okay and uh, second thing let's say uh, let's say we have a replication going on for uh, for a schema level right and uh, and a table space has been created in the in the primary yeah okay, uh, okay, wait basically wait, the I'll, source database i'll stop you i'll stop you so we haven't come oh, to okay. that point okay no so i'm sorry questions will be answered once we once we do the setup don't worry as you can see this is the first day and during our first couple of hours right so don't completely move forward just take it step by step as a task for this week set up the lab create the application schema i'll tell you how to set up the lab and training guidelines now and also create uh, do the golden gate installation do this task this week next week move with the next week task all these questions will be answered okay anyone else has any other question श्रीरमन यू हेड अ क्वेश्चन Uh, i was just pointing out to the same thing okay we'll discuss about all that okay so guys okay the okay so let us move to the training guidelines now okay now with respect to this training uh you must have received two emails first is related to your oracle golden gate enrollment okay so on your registered email id if you have enrolled recently it takes 24 to 48 hours to process your enrollment so if if you haven't received it you will be receiving it soon so first email you would be you would have received is oracle golden gate courses training enrollment confirmation so there are three courses of course you know golden gate classic microservices and very data so if you have enrolled for all three you will get enrollment for all three if you have enrolled for any two you will you will find those details so verify those details in the email which you have received verify those details and if there is any discrepancy revert on the email and we'll check so verify this so this is the enrollment confirmation email just for the information second email which you would have received is related to lab setup kit setting up the lab right now once you click on this link setting up of lab click on this link so there you will find virtual box setup then you will find step by step pictorial guide for setting up your oracle golden gate virtual boxes and then there is one video as well and then there is gate1.obs so what steps you need to do download virtual box 
and download gget one dot one dot so virtual box which i have shared over here is 6.0.20 i think the latest version would be 6.1.16 so if you want to download the latest version you can download it from virtual box dot org as well so you can go to virtual box dot org and you can download it from there as well if you want okay so there you will find the latest version if you face any issues related to it now download this gate1.ovi it is around 11 to 13 gb file so it will take few some time if your network connection is not good so i would recommend you to use lan cable to download it if you already haven't done it okay so download this once you download so what you have to do is you have to import this virtual box so once you download it you won't find anything over here so click on file click on import appliance and go to the location where you have downloaded that gate1.ovi so mine is under d drive under d the app setup so select this gate1.ova click on next then you can use either generate new mac address for all network adapters you can do that and then click on import your import will start okay once it gets imported it will be in powered off mode let it remain in powered off mode so guys all these steps what i'm telling you are mentioned in this uh, step by step guide as well as in this video okay so i'm just letting you know how to proceed so once you have imported then this gate one will be in powered off mode so what do you need to do in the powered off mode only right click on gate one click on clone okay so let me open that guide so in this step by step pictorial guide i have mentioned everything so what you need to do is one because i i don't see that clone option activate in enabled right now because i am i'm currently running this virtual box that's why so once you power it off or it is down you will see this clone option coming up okay so first few steps include how to import and then next is cloning so this is the cloning part so once you right click on clone so here it will ask you to provide the name provide the name as gate2 provide the path so you can change the path if you want if you have say for example less space in c drive you can import it in d drive as well change the path over here okay and then ensure in the gate2 when you are installing when, when you are importing you are putting this generate new mac addresses for all network adapters this is really very important you should select this and then click on next once you click on next it will ask you do you want to do full clone yes select full clone and your cloning will start so cloning will take some time so once cloning is done both of them will be gate 1 and gate 2 will be in powered off mode next what you have to do is you have to update the host name in gate 1 so how do you update the host name in gate 1 so log into your gate 2 okay then all user password is welcome one in small letters oracle user password is welcome one in small letters oracle user password is welcome one in small letters so go to oracle welcome one then using root it, it is in small letters guys not in capital letters okay so root is also welcome one in small letters so then edit this file file etc says config network so using root only you can edit it so you will you will find over there because you have cloned it from gate one so that's why you will find over there gate you uh, you will find over there gate one so what you have to do is you have to edit it to 
vi slash etc slash sysconfig slash uh, network so this will be gate one you have to do it to gate two i have already done it that's why you should it, see it at gate two okay now once you have done that it will be done for you so it will be updated now using root then another thing what you have to do is you have to update your slash etc slash host again through root so ensure another thing on both gate one and gate two that is very important thing the output of slash etc slash host file should match with your if config output so because we are using two ethernet adapters so you will find two ip address being assigned to this the ip address being assigned to gate 2 for me is 11192168 dot 56.110 and 111 you can use any of the two ip address so once you have done that edit your etc slash host file with root of course so under slash etc slash host in front of gate 2 you should have ip address either either at 192.168.56.110 or 111 so i have chosen 110 similarly for gate 1 you have to check if config output of gate 1 and provide the if conf, uh, provide any of the ip address of gate 1 over here ensure that slash etc slash host file matches on both the sides once you have done that ping gate one from gate2 to check whether ping is working everything is fine similarly ping gate2 from gate1 to ensure everything is correct and proper and then you can restart this you can restart because to you have made changes so you need to restart this virtual box using root so to restart this virtual box you can use the command init6 to restart to implement the change I'm not root, so that's why I'm able to start. So you can restart only using root. So this will set your Gate 1 and Gate 2 machines. Once your Gate 1 and Gate 2 are set up correctly, like this, next is you have to create the database. As I already told, database is installed, but database is not created. So what you have to do is you have to create the database now so how do you create the database as i, as I mentioned go to u01 app oracle product 12.2 bin here run dbca So DBCA is database configuration assistant, which will open the OUI for you to create the database. Okay. So here select create a database. Then select global database name as like because this is gate 2. So on gate 2 select OGGDB2 on uh, gate 1 select OGGDB1. Now provide the administrator password whatever password you want to choose. I am providing welcome one here, welcome one here and then create as container database. So if you want to create multi-tenant database you need to select create as container database. If you don't want to create multi-tenant database then check this box. So I want to create it as multi-tenant, so I'll create OGGDB2 and PDB2. Once you do that, click on next. Validating for free space. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So on the next step, it, it will check summary and then click on next. Your database will be created. So create OGGDB1, PDB1 on source, OGGDB2, PDB2 on gate 2 click on finish
your database will be created. Now, once the database is created, on GGET2, you will also have to edit the TNS entries. Okay, so if I go to Oracle Home, so only on GGET2, you have to edit the TNS entries. On GGET1, already the TNS is for, they are for OGG DB1 and PDB1. So Oracle Home slash network slash admin. So VI TNS names dot ORA. All these points are mentioned in video if you watch that video. So there you will find OGG DB1 and PDB1 because it is cloned from there. So you will have to change it to OGG DB2. Host name is GGate2. Service name is OGG DB2. Similarly here PDB2, GGate2, PDB2. Select it. Save it and close it. That's okay. And for listener, by default, it will be stop. So you may need to start the listener. In my case, it is already running. I already started it. Yeah, it is already running. So for you, you just start the listener. It will automatically pick up the services for you. So your database will be created as well. Once the database is created, next step is to create the application schemas and objects. So application schemas and objects you can also create in the next session but just to let you know how to log into this so set up the environment OGG db2 log into container database as sql plus slash as sysdba okay select name from v dollar database now in multi done select name from v dollar database OGGDB2 show PDBs. So to connect to pluggable database, I can do alter session set container equal to PDB2. Okay. Now, okay, I forgot to tell you one thing is we did download an installation of Oracle Golden Gate. So guys, these activity guides are shared with you. They will be shared with you. Okay. So these activity guides are present with each so today we did download and installation of oracle golden gate right so download and installation of oracle golden gate is present under activity guide one so all these steps what we did as i mentioned you will have step by step activity guide with each document right so these steps some for some activity guides you may find it has 12c written so steps for 12c and 19c remain same for installation etc so you have to follow these activity guide one for today's session which is download and installation okay now for creation of application schemas and tables it is present under activity guide three under activity guide three you will find under step five anyways we'll be doing application user and table creation in the next session but if you want to do it in this session you can refer to activity guide three section five so control f create so 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 here you will find uh, section five go to section five under section 5 i have mentioned uh, create the user so you can create this user this is the application user create user gg training one identified by welcome one so we can create it so application schemas in uh, uh, pluggable multi-tenant architecture reside under pluggable database so connect to the pluggable database and you can create the application schemas from there. So you will be receiving those activity guides. So if I log in, ORA ENV SQL plus slash SSDBA. So show PDBs, alter session, set container equal to pdb1 okay now we'll create the application schemas over here so section 5 right now in F. so it's not mandatory for you to follow 
Okay, let us do it in next section. Next session, we'll create this application schemas or tables in the next session. But just if you want to create application schemas before the session, you can go to activity guide three and under section five, you can find these details. Okay, now coming back to the session recording. So this session recording will be made available to you in next few hours. Okay. So the session recording will be made available to you and under the session recording folder, you will find these activity guides uploaded. So in the same folder. So after some time, you will receive a email stating that a folder has been shared with you with the name latest underscore weekend underscore 2109 classic. So 2109 here means year and month. So this is year 2021 and month is September. So latest weekend 2109 classic. So this folder will be shared with you to your Gmail ID. So once it is shared, you will receive the notification over your to your Gmail ID as well as the notification will be sent to the WhatsApp group as well as soon as the session is uploaded. And in the same folder, you will also find the activity guides, whatever activity guides I'm mentioning to you those activity guides are also present. So for today's session, you have to follow activity guide one, which is present under module M02. So follow this activity guide one, download and installation of Oracle Google Guide. Okay. Any question? Ashish, this is your case. Just one quick question. Yeah. On, on watching these videos, what, what I try to do when I try to download the video, the quality of video is pretty good, but when I tried to play videos from Google Drive, it was a little hazy. Was it for me or is there a tip that I should follow so that uh, screen is not hazy? I don't think it is. If your in internet connection is good, then you should be fine. It's not it's pretty one, one GB, so I have pretty fast internet connection. So maybe it, it was just me at that time on a specific video. Yeah, maybe but it's you. For that time, if you still face issues, just let me know. We can see. It means I'm again just Google out. Definitely, I'll have to Google out for that issue. I, I, okay, I, okay. I, I don't face. I, I haven't uh, received any. Means I know because of quality issues sometimes. Like if you see that option, run it in 480p or 720p. That may improve the quality of. The it, it did not show the option to upgrade the speed. It was at 360 or something like that. Okay, I'll upload it and see if you face this issue. Then we can uh, uh, take it from there. I, I see. And in the downloaded video, it does not have the speed control. I believe when I play it from uh, your uh, Google Drive, it had the speed control where I could change the speed of uh, play speed. Okay. Yeah, that is that is correct. Yeah. That's so correct. It That's the way it is. Player. It depends on the player. If you want to increase the speed, I can. That that depends on the player. What player you are using? I see. I see. What's the default player on Google Drive when I play from Google Drive? It it is internal. I, I don't think that I'm not sure which player they use, but it is internal. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. No. No. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Okay. So guys, next session is Ashish, next week. Uh, Sri Ram here. Same Sorry. Uh, Ashish Sri Ram here. Sorry. Uh, but can you please answer Shibin's question in uh, the chat box as to why we need two email, uh, two Ethernet adapters? You can use one. It's not mandatory for you to use two Ethernet adapters. It's not mandatory. All right. Thank you. Okay, so guys, if no more question is there, we can wrap up the session today. I hope today's session was informative and useful and you were able to follow guys. So next session is going to be real practical and it is going to be real fun in the next session when we discuss different concepts, supplemental logging, etc. And decide where to install and other like setting up Oracle Golden Gate processes, how data flow you will see. So everything we'll be discussing in the next session. Uh, so I this is Abhijit uh, Ashish. Yeah, uh, Sorry for the, yeah, it was my key, uh, it was unattended at that point of time. So sorry for that. But uh, we will be having uh, only one session per week, right? Yeah, 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 correct. Okay, okay. Thanks for information. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining today's session.